Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, then hi, my name is Kelly Pukoski, and today I'm going to be sharing some toddler learning activities. I think a lot of us are in the same boat these days, stuck at home, inside a bit more between COVID and some of the rainier, cooler weather approaching. And so a lot of us are looking for some new, fresh ideas for our toddlers to keep them entertained at home. My daughter Mila is 15 months old, and so a lot of these activities are in the 12 to 18 month range. However, I do offer some ideas of how you can scaffold them either for younger babies or for older toddlers. So for the first activity, you're going to need some toilet paper rolls or paper towel rolls and any kind of rope that you have at home. And this is to do a lacing activity. This is a great one for younger toddlers because the pieces are a lot bigger than most lacing activities that you'll see. And so they're able to handle them a little bit more easily. All I did was tie off one end of the rope and she could use the other end to lace through the paper towel and toilet paper rolls. I've also seen a version of this activity done where you cut pool noodles into discs and they can lace those through the rope. This version would make a great bath time activity if you're looking for something new to do in the bath. Whenever your toddler has mastered the toilet paper rope version of this activity, then you can move on to smaller objects. We tried it with pipe cleaners and pasta. You could use any kind of pasta that has a hole in it really. If your toddler has some difficulty with the pipe cleaner wig around then something like a straw would work well because it would be a little bit more structured. These activities are both great for practicing some fine motor skills and hand-eye coordination and it also can provide a sensory experience if you're using different materials like the pipe cleaners and the pasta. As with most of the activities that I'm sharing today I recommend modeling to your toddler how to do the activity before you expect them to be able to do it. They can't read our minds so they need to see the activity actually being done to figure out what they are supposed to do. If your toddler is anything like Mila and loves collecting things that Outside, then this sensory bin is likely going to be a hit. I find sensory bins can be a little bit overwhelming when you start going online and you see these elaborate Pinterest worthy sensory bins. For me a sensory bin needs to be easy to set up and ideally easy to clean. All we did was collect things like sticks, rocks, pine cones, acorns, stuff like that on one of our normal walks which was an activity in and of itself. And then we brought them home, put them in a bin, and covered it with oatmeal. Now I find Mila needs a little bit of structure and guidance with sensory bins. She doesn't just go to town and dig around in them on her own. So we made a game of it by playing hide and seek with the acorns. Acorns are her favorite, so I hid them in the oatmeal and asked her to find them. This one was also super easy to clean up. We just swept up the oatmeal and poured it back in for the next time that we played. We did a similar sensory bin using some soapy water and some of her plastic animal toys. We did it outside in the water table, but you could also do it inside with a bin if you don't mind the mess or do it in the bathtub with some bubble bath and again we just hid the animals and did some hide and seek and I asked her to find a certain animal so she'd dig around in the water and find it. It's also great for developing language because we talked a lot about the names of the animals or the sounds that they make. I've also seen some older toddlers enjoy pretending to give their animals baths so that would be a great thing to do as well with this activity. The next activity is Pretty basic and self-explanatory, but it's something that I overlooked for a while, and that is painting. Again, I recommend modeling the movements of dipping the paintbrush in the paint and then brushing it on the paper or canvas for them to mimic you. But this is a great activity for working on handling the paintbrush, hand-eye coordination, fine motor skills again, and it's something that also will extend into them learning how to use a fork or a spoon. I shared this over on my Instagram recently, but another option for younger babies or even just older toddlers who are still putting everything in their mouths or maybe it's just a bad day for making a big mess in the house. An option is to use the paintbrush with some water and paint it onto construction paper. The water onto the construction paper makes it turn into a darker, more vibrant color. So it gives the same effect as painting without making a huge mess. The next activity is pretty easy to set up and there are a lot of options of materials depending on what you have around the house. We use some big pom-poms and an empty wipe container to make a ball drop activity. The wipe container has a big slit in the top and the pom-poms fit through very easily. So this is a great one for younger babies just kind of learning this skill. If you don't have these materials, you could use any small objects that you have really and just cut an appropriately sized hole in the top of any kind of container. She really enjoyed transferring the pom-poms between containers and once she mastered the skill, we moved on to something a little bit more challenging which is the coin box. I had these wooden craft coins from the dollar store. I just cut a slit in the top of an empty cardboard box and they fit perfectly in there. You could also use any plastic play coins that you have or poker chips even and whatever container that you have. This activity is a little bit more challenging than the pom-pom drop because you have to be much more precise getting the coin into the box. But again, she had a lot of fun with this and it was a great way to add more of a challenge while still practicing those same skills. Another fun activity to do indoors at home is a sticky wall mural. We've done these sticky walls before and they're a 
lot of fun. You just tape up some clear contact paper with the sticky part facing out and give some materials for them to put on, take off, and it's a lot of fun. We did this one a lot when Mila was younger and just kind of basically took turns taking them on and off, but now I thought I would add a little bit more of a challenge and I gave her a whole bunch of different materials, some of which stuck very well, some didn't stick very well at all, and so it was a little bit more fun for her to kind of see which ones are sticking. She had to work a little bit harder to stick them up there, but she actually spent the entire day trying to go see what would stick up on the wall, like putting her Cheerios on there and stuff like that. So it was really a fun thing that kind of went on throughout our whole day. A great way to extend this activity even more for older toddlers would be to do some color sorting. So if you have a couple of smaller sticky wall areas on the window, you could color coat them with different colors of tape and give the same colors of objects for them to practice sorting into the different sections. Mila has recently been really interested in Lift the Flat books and we do have quite a few of them here for her to look through. However, I thought it'd be fun to make our own using some sticky notes. All I did was take some sticky notes and cover up certain pictures throughout her book so that she could do the same thing as what she does in a Lift the Flat book. I chose some books that she was quite familiar with already so it was kind of fun because because she knew what pictures were supposed to be there. This is obviously great for language development. We were reading through the books and also talking about what was covered, where it was. Older toddlers could even take a turn putting the sticky notes on their books and you could either take a turn reading or they can go back and look at them later. Another activity that I recommend is to do some baking with your toddler. I often include Mila in our baking so that she can have a chance to practice skills like stirring or pouring some of the ingredients in. Her favorite part of baking right now is actually putting the silicone muffin liners into to the muffin tin. Baking is a great activity in general because they learn a lot about following directions, hand-eye coordination. It's also a great sensory experience for them to feel the different ingredients. We love using our learning tower so she can stand up and actually see all that's going on while I'm baking, but with a younger baby you could also just give them a muffin tin and some liners and let them play around with practicing putting them in. I'm going to be sharing some more recipe videos here on my channel coming up soon and I always try and feature Mila helping out with the baking. So if you're interested in seeing more of that then subscribe and hit the bell button so that you get notified when I have a new video coming out. Those are all of the activities that I am sharing today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. Please leave a comment down below if you have any any other toddler activity recommendations so that we can all read through the comments and get some ideas from each other. As always, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.